Did you know that you can do 3D video projection mapping with Adobe After Effects? I will cover how to connect your projector as an output display and how to corner pin your video content to a physical surface. I will also create some quick example animations and demonstrate some basic masking. I've used After Effects for many years, but I never knew you could use it to do video mapping. The process is actually very straightforward. Let's start by creating a new composition. We can do that by coming up here to Composition and selecting New Composition, or we can use the shortcut Command N on a Mac. However, I like to click on this Film icon at the bottom of the project window. I'll call the composition Projector Output and make the dimensions the same as my full HD projector, which is 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now I'll create another composition and call this one Surface Content. I'll make its dimensions 1080 by 1080, so it's square like the white cardboard square onto which I'm projecting. Let's create a new solid to put in our surface content. I can do that by coming up here to Layer, New, Solid. I'm happy with this nice bright orange colour. Now I'll add some text by selecting the text tool and dragging a bounding box inside my composition. I'll centralise it horizontally and vertically within the composition with the align tools. The first step towards seeing our video content output on the white square involves dragging the surface content composition inside the projector output composition. I want to set my projector as my display output. I do that by heading into the After Effects Preferences and opening the Video Preview settings. If I enable Mercury Transit, these video devices become available. Adobe Monitor 1 is my laptop display. Monitor 2 is my full HD projector. I know this because I can see its 1920 by 1080 resolution here. I'll select it and hit OK. I'll navigate to my effects panel and search for corner pin. I could drag the effect onto the surface content composition layer, but since it's selected, if I double click the corner pin effect, it will automatically add it to the layer and I can see it appear in the effect controls window. I can pull these four corner points around inside my preview window and move them onto the corners of my white square in physical space. Let's make our surface content a bit more interesting now. I'll turn off the visibility of the text and leave the orange solid. With the orange solid selected, I can add a fill effect. This fills the solid with a colour of my choice. If I toggle on this stopwatch, it will add a keyframe at the current position of the playhead, which at this point is right at the beginning. A keyframe is kind of like a little pin, which fixes the parameter's value to that point in time on the layer. With the layer selected, if I hit U on the keyboard, it reveals my keyframes and I can see the one I just made at the start of the composition. Now if I move the playhead to the end of my composition and change the colour to something else, that colour will also get a keyframe. I'll keyframe a third colour in the middle so the animation will cycle through even more colours. If I scrub through my composition, the animation interpolates between the three colours that I specified with keyframes. Let's create another simple animation. If I right-click in the empty space of my composition, I can create a solid more quickly. I'll make this one white. If I want to bring up its position properties, I can do that by swiveling down its transform properties, or I can use the hotkey P for position. I'll hit the stopwatch again to start recording keyframes. With the playhead at the start, I can click and drag on my solid in the preview window to change its position. If I hold shift while I do this, I can restrict it to one axis. 
I'll move it all the way out a few. I'll move ahead in time and then change the position again until it's all the way off the top of the composition. If I scrub across the timeline, we can see the solid animates between those two keyframes and moves from the bottom of the composition to the top. Let's do a final animation using one of After Effects' native effects. I'll create a new solid and call it Shatter. Then I'll apply the Shatter effect. I'll set the view to Rendered. I'm going to set the pattern to Glass, but check out the different patterns yourself to find one you like. Now our solid shatters into pieces, like something being thrown through a pane of glass. The last thing I'll briefly cover is masking. Imagine we are mapping a building and the white cardboard square represents the front facade, but also imagine that there is a doorway into the building where we don't want to project any content. We want to mask out the doorway. You might think a good starting point is to select the pen tool and start drawing on our mask. However, we run into problems because the corner pin effect also applies to our mask. So I'm going to hit the shortcut M to bring up the mask and delete it. Now I want to pre-compose this comp. I do this by selecting it and going to Layer, Pre-compose. I'll call it Corner Pinning and move all attributes into the new composition. Now if I draw my mask, there is no interference from the corner pin effect. I'll change the mask from Add to Subtract, and the mask excludes content inside it. I can pull these points around to match my doorway precisely. If I had windows or other things I wanted a mask out as well, I would select the pen tool again and draw it on, not forgetting to change it from Add to Subtract. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. If this video helped you, please hit that like button. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on future projection mapping tutorials and videos.